Joseph Goebbels, I'd say he's probably the most prominent individual. I think he's the easiest one to memorize just because he's Mr. Propaganda Man. So he was appointed Minister for Public Enlightenment and Propaganda on March 113th. Clearly, I know my dates. Clearly, I know my dates. It's March 13th um, in 1933. Um, he cultivated and consolidated the Fuhrer myth, um, which puts Hitler as like this ultimate godlike father. Um, and he became the first president of whatever that word is. I'm sorry, I, I can't do it today. The Reich Culture Chamber. Um, propaganda under Goebbels took many forms, and that's what we all see with all the different propaganda sources for Hitler. Um, so speeches, writings, pamphlets, leaflets, posters, radio broadcasts, films, music, theatre, etc. Um, and he merged forms of cultural expression with Nazi ideology. Then we've got Hermann Goering. Um, not that he's, I'm not going to start rating these guys as if any of them are good people, in my opinion, in my opinion. Um, but I just, I like to just give it from a base of advice. Um, so I feel like when you're memorizing, it's good to know like two of them in pretty good detail. And I'd say that it's Joseph Goebbels and Goering and the other two just, kind of, and well, there's obviously more than another two, but the other ones just kind of go on and on. I feel like these ones are easy to memorize. Um, Goering was a former military officer, so Hitler really trusted him with the command of the SA, which was this um, the secret police. Um, he formed the Gestapo, and he was the one who established the concentration camps. So I feel like that's why it's kind of easier in terms of your memorizing, because you're like, okay, well, Goebbels was propaganda. Um, Goering um, formed Gestapo started the concentration camps he was critical in the orchestration of the night of long knives as well because he was the leader of this gestapo and then he ended up becoming the leader of the german air force and then by the end of it um hitler declared Goering his successor so i feel like that's he just did a lot and had a lot of like influence in different elements of the nazi party so that's why it's really good to involve him then there's heinrich himmler um who was in charge of the ss um, in 1929, that's different from the SA. Um, so the role of SS was um, bodyguards of Hitler and the other prominent Nazi leaders. So they were very much um, literally bodyguards. They were very big on just protecting them rather than um, going out against enemies. Um, and it was a much smaller body so that they could develop it into a powerful corpse in Nazi Germany. He um, introduced two new key functions, so protecting the internal security of the country and then maintaining guardianship over racial purity, which meant that he took control of um, German police forces to have that internal security. Um, and then he, in 1933 to 1934, he began to oversee the centralised co concentration system across all of Germany. Um, and then there's Rudolf Hess, who I literally forgot about, um, he was deputy Führer of the Nazi party, um, and had like a lot of responsibilities, um, by like appearing on Hitler's behalf. If he couldn't, he made speeches on Hitler's behalf. He signed laws, um, and he crash landed and was arrested in Britain. And he was held in custody for all of World War II. So I'm not saying like, when I said before, like the other ones are easier. It's not that this guy doesn't obviously isn't a prominent individual, but when you compare him to Goebbels or you can um, pair him to Goering, him like you're gonna. I just feel like it's much better to mention Goering, who was very big um, in orchestrating um, the Night of Long Knives or who established the concentration camps. I feel like it's you're better off talking about him rather than memorizing. Rudolf has made speeches on Hitler's behalf. I just feel like when we, you're looking at like the extent of their relevance. Um, I'm not saying this guy is irrelevant. I don't want to come off like I'm saying the wrong thing. But I just, in terms of um, memory, guys, I feel like this, some of them are better than others, but not in terms of people. They're all really bad people. Um, and then there's Ernst Röhm, who was influential during the early years of the Nazi party, was given the role of SA chief. Um, he wanted the German army to be incorporated into the SA, which wasn't a popular belief. Um, and then ended up reducing the SA by two thirds so that he could gain the army support um but as a result hitler was convinced this guy was a traitor so hitler literally had him arrested and then killed in the long night in the night of long knives all right